go. Hello everyone, welcome to the first session. Uh, my name is Mr. O oh, and I'll be explaining the math section of the SAT practices exam number one. It's actually provided online and I'll be providing the link below. It's on College Board's website, but mainly I wanted to do was to explain the how to do these questions really fast uh, as the first time round, and then I'll break down each question thoroughly in order to make sure that you are able to do these questions and understand them fully. Um, SAT College Board does provide the explanations in Word, but hopefully this will also help you understand the concepts a little bit more. So if you go to the practice exam one on section three, this is the math portion as I mentioned before, this is the first questions that are presented to you. I'll be doing the problem real fast in the beginning, then I'll explain it very thoroughly. So I'll go through this problem real quick. So I'm looking at this question and I see that k equals to three. So I need to real quick solve it out. And I am going to solve it real quick. And, and real quick, I know number one is going to be D. But I'll explain to you now how I did the problem. And first, I'm going to do is copy down the problem exactly what states right here. And I'll break it down to you number one. So this is number one. And the important thing you must understand when you are doing number one is that this question requires you to do this, uh, the concept of substitution. And so when we notice is that this value k right here is the same value right here. And so based on the concept of substitution, and I'm gonna write this out, what we can do is that we could replace this k with three. And so this is what I'm exactly going to do. Afterwards, my end goal is that I need to have variables on one side. So variables need to be one, on one side completely, while constants need to be on the other side. That is my very end goal. And so for this problem, what I am going to do is try to get rid of, all, move all constants actually to one side while variables to the other side. And so the only way I could do this is that first I need to get rid of fractions because I personally don't like fractions. I don't think a lot of people like fractions. And so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to multiply three on each side. What happens right here is that these three values will cancel out and that means that this will multiply with each other. Three times three is going to be nine. And so what happens is that I am left with an equation x minus one equals to nine. But I am not done yet. As I mentioned before, variables must be by itself and constants must be by itself on each side. And so for this question, I am going to add one onto each side and thus I finalize my answer x equals to 10 and on the, the multiple choice values, the answer is D. And so I am finished with number one. I am going to continue on to number two. So on number two, the question asked me this, i equals to negative one, what's the sum and whatever not. And so the part is this, I notice that there's no square root. So I'm going to just quickly solve it and notice that, oh, so it's the same statement as me saying this because the plus don't do really much and I'm going to solve it out and I'm going to add it up together and I see, oh, a, okay. And so for number two, this is how I'm going to do number two real quick. So I'm going to copy down the question real quick, once again, and I'm going to break down what they tell me. So I have this, and I'm only taking out the key information that I need. So I notice that, okay, so I see this, and I'm going to get started. And so for this question right here, the important thing I'm noticing when I'm looking at this problem is that there's a plus sign right here. And I know that whenever I distribute out these, um, the plus sign in order to get rid of the parentheses, I realize that, that this plus with a negative, if I distribute it with each other, very simply like this, what's going to happen is that this negative is going to stay in negative, this positive is going to stay in positive. And so I'm literally going to copy down the problem step by step and notice that this literally lays out to this concept. The parentheses disappear and this is literally how the problem is going to look like. Afterwards, I notice that the i's must go with the i's while the constants must go with the constants. And so for this question, I notice that seven minus eight, it's going to be negative one. And I get that. And that is my constant. I'm gonna put a circle around it so that you could keep track. And so right here, I notice that with the, what we call the imaginary numbers, these are complex numbers. And if you feel free, 
Feel free to check this concept up later if you're not 100% sure or want to study more. But plox, uh, complex numbers basically have a definition where if you square root negative 1, it equals to i. But we are not going to use this concept because we don't have any square roots. Rather, we notice that there are two similar concepts where there's 3i plus 9i. And I'm going to add it up. It's going to be 12i, which is going to be the finalized answer. So once I look at the answer key, and I notice, oh, negative 1 minus 12i is the answer. And so I finalize my answer, and it is a. And so that's how you do number 2. And for the very last question uh, for today, we're doing just number 3 for this video. I am going to explain how to do number three. So I'm going to look at it real quick. So on Saturday morning, Armand sent M text message each hour for five hours. Okay, M for five hours, P each for four hours, which is the final equations represents the total number of da, 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 da. So the part is this. Um, since it's each hour, each hour, I noticed that, okay, so I got that. So it's five M plus four. 4p since I want the total so 5n plus 4p okay so the final answer is c and now I'm going to explain how I ended up with the answer for number three so on number three so when I'm reading this question and I'm going to move this up a little bit so we could keep track for number three particularly I'm noticing a few things if you notice that I am doing annotations so I'm looking for key words that are going to tell me how to do this problem and so for this problem I notice the key words is n text and if you notice, I also wrote it here, but I will copy it over. M text for five hours and P text for four hours. And the important thing is the word each hour. So each time, each hour that I'm sending these text messages and I'm Armand, I'm sending M messages. So that means that I'm sending M per hour and I'm sending P per hour text messages. And so the idea is that if I'm multiplying this M messages, Per hour, this is Armand, duly know. And whenever I'm sending this, this is for Armand, duly know. If I'm sending M messages per hour and he's, he's sending them for five hours, the units for hours cancel out. And so technically, he sends a total of five M messages. And this is very important to keep track of units along the way. Um, but as long as you get the practice in, this will eventually start getting easier. You don't need to follow this complete method but so for um for tyrone actually it's going to actually be p messages per hour for four hours so i'm going to write p messages per hour times the four hours and what happens same concept these cancel out because of cross multiplication and this becomes four p messages the end important thing that I noticed was the fact, if you notice right here I circled, was the four hours, total hours that exist. And so when I have these total hours, what I need to do in the end is that I need to combine them together. So that's why I did 5m plus 4p, and I find out that is my answer C. That will tell me how many total messages that Armand and Tyrone sent. And that concludes the video for today.